Ah, welcome back, my friend. Pull up a chair, grab an ale, and let me regale you with the tale of those harbingers of death, the Banshee and the Benye. The Irish Banshee and the Scottish Benye tread the darkest of nights as omens from another world, that of the unknown beyond. Though similar at first glance, they were regarded as quite different beings. They remain in the folklore of both cultures as fearsome beings feared not for their appearance nor their magical powers, but for the message they brought, that of the death of a loved one or family member. Though brief descriptions of these beings give the impression that they are the same, it is important to note that they were not, despite their comparative purposes. To begin, the Irish Banshee was considered a messenger from the other world, the Irish version of the great beyond and or realm of fairies. In legend, banshees were known as keening, wailing female spirits who appeared directly preceding someone's death, or at the precise moment of it, and were thought to be fairies, ghosts of mothers who died in childbirth, or ghosts of women who died unexpectedly. Since the other world of Irish mythology can be interchangeable in certain texts as either the realm of the fairy folk or the dead, what precisely the banshees are have not been determined. However, the belief that they were women who died prematurely seems to be the most widespread belief, possibly to create an atmosphere of sorrow and grief around the spirits. It was also a common belief in Ireland that this particular banshee would tie herself to one individual family and serve as a singular warning. Thus, it was thought that if a group of banshees were heard howling, it meant that someone in a wealthy Irish clan was about to succumb to death's fatal charms. In a similar fashion, the Scottish Benye was believed to be a symbol of approaching death, though in a vastly different way from the Banshee. Again, she was a spirit of a woman who lost her life far too soon. However, she would only remain as a Benye until her ghost reached the age she otherwise would have died at. This distinction is interesting, because it indicates that the Scottish Benye would not forever be sentenced to mourn the death of others, and it implies that the Benye was not born a fairy. Her gift lasted only as long as her life would have, eventually giving her a reprieve and allowing her to visit those she was torn away from. This freedom is never recorded in the Irish Banshee myth. Rather than wailing, the Benny Ye was considered a washerwoman. Upon the death of a person, she would be seen washing blood from funeral shrouds in a nearby river, a silent omen rather than a noisy one. She was much more capable of involvement in, with the human world than the Banshee, most likely due to her eventual ability to rejoin them in the afterlife, as she was recorded as interacting with humans more than Banshees ever did in tales. As it goes, when the Benny Ye spoke with a human, the human was to answer three of her questions to obtain three answers to his own, and was granted a wish for almost anything desired. Interestingly, Banshees and Benny Ye have been described in very similar ways, except for three definitive points. Together, a banshee and Benny Ye were believed to have taken on multiple forms, either as an old crone or a beautiful young woman. In both cases, the being was most often dressed in very plain clothes, a grey cloak and a green, red or black underdress with long, pale hair. The major distinctions between the Benny Ye and banshees, however, once again came from the Benny Ye, as she is always depicted, both young and old, as having one nostril, drooping breasts, and frog-like webbed feet. Despite that both Banshees and Benny Ye were considered threatening beings, their intentions were seemingly in the interest of providing warnings rather than triggering human deaths themselves. According to legend, they did not predict the viewer's own death, nor were they recorded as directly causing someone's death. They were believed to be merely announcers, a terrible phone call from the hospital, as it were. It is important to understand the differences between the two creatures, even though they are quite similar. Out of appreciation for the Irish and Scottish cultures, as well as respect for the creatures themselves, should they ever be viewed. So there my friend ends a tale of the Banshee and a Benny Ye. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe, like and leave a comment down below. And if, on your journey home, 
you should spy an old woman washing clothes in the river. Pray they're not yours.